All right, I think I've hit the level of boredom that is so severe that I have invented something. Okay, maybe I didn't invent it per se, but I've never seen anything like this. And it's just fun to build stuff, so let's not bury the lead. The first thing is, you guys know about these sound panels, right? The DIY acoustic absorption sound panels. I'm sure you've seen a bunch of videos about them. I'm sure you may even already have some, but for those who don't know what they are, essentially they are a tool that you can use to help control the acoustics in the room if you're doing any sort of audio recording, mixing, or production. I've made a bunch of different versions of these panels over the years, and last year I made these specific panels because I was in an apartment and I couldn't do structural changes to the room. This is not a video on how to build them because there's a million videos out there and you could, I'm sure you've already seen them. Essentially what it is, is a two foot by four foot wooden frame that has one sheet of Owens Corning 703 insulation wrapped up in fabric that looks really nice that you can mount on the wall. The way that I built mine is essentially like a picture frame that you can hang on the wall. The reason I made mine like that is because I've been in temporary situations where I'm going to need to take them down and repair the wall. So hanging it like a picture frame does the least amount of damage. So check this out. Now I'm in this studio, which all of the walls are absorption panels that are 12 inches deep. So I don't necessarily need those panels that I made to hang on the wall, but if you've ever worked in a commercial studio, I'm sure you've seen what we call gobos, which essentially are freestanding absorption panels, often on wheels. The reason why those are so useful is because each recording setup is different. You're putting things in different parts of the room. There's different numbers of people and instruments. Having these gobos, especially on wheels, allows you to move them and sort of reshape the room and have more control of your recording circumstances. So if you remember in this video that I did on getting super tight and fat drum sounds, I basically barricaded my drum set in these panels. The reason I did that is because I wanted my drums to essentially sound like they were in a closet full of clothes. There was sort of a problem that I ran into when I did this, which is that the panels would not stand up on their own. So I essentially just leaned them up against any object I could find, microphone stand or a chair or something like that. It looked a little silly. And it wasn't that practical because you have all these random pieces of furniture scattered around the rooms to hold up these panels. It was, it was, it was fine, but I came up with a better solution. So here's where my invention comes in. This solves the problem of being able to take the panels off the walls and use them on the floor as freestanding gobos, either on wheels or just on their feet meeting right up to the ground. And I'm gonna show you exactly how you can build them for your home studio so that you can apply this in your own workflow. And the great thing is all you're gonna to need to get started is to absolutely destroy the like button for the YouTube algorithm, hit the subscribe button and watch this video all the way to the end and you will be able to build some of these for your home studio. Let's go. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna build, let's call them shoes. And the idea is these are gonna be things that I can take my sound panel and slide them into that will hold them up so that they can be standalone gobos. So the sound panel will be able to double as a panel you can mount on a wall, or if you would like to take it off the wall and slide it into these shoes, which will hold it up so that the sound panel can act as a gobo. So first I'm gonna take some measurements, see how exactly I'm gonna put this thing together. I'll show you what parts I'm using and exactly how I assembled it and how you can replicate this at home. Cool, let's go. All right, so I ran over to the hardware store to pick up some supplies. I got some two by fours by three foot studs. I got some plywood, you don't need that. And then I got some two by four particle board sheets. Now some of the other things you're gonna need are some felt pads and some casters, optional. You can pick or choose or use both. I got the Everbuilt casters, got the Everbuilt stainless steel corner braces, which by the way are super useful. I use these things for everything in my studio. Very, very handy little tools. Then I got the felt pads, which are optional if you don't wanna use the casters for feet slide around on the floor. Now I'm gonna measure this to the size that I think is going to be best for holding up my panels. 
Using a square is extremely helpful when doing right. projects like this. So you have three sections. The outer section is going to be where the angle braces are. These are the sections that will hold the panel to stand up. Okay, now between the angle braces and the actual panel, I'm going to use a piece of wood. I'm going to connect the angle braces to some particle board that will be taller, sort of like a high top version of a shoe, if you will. The particle board is nice because it has a nice soft surface that's very strong that essentially I can slide the panel into that will hold the panel up. All right, so what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna make these cuts on the particle board. And these cuts are gonna act as the top and the bottom of the shoes. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill these angle braces down through the top layer into the two by four. And I want there to be a very firm grip from the anchors because I'm using anchors to drill down into these. And they need to be strong enough to hold the weight of the sound panel. All right, enough of me yapping. Let's look at this thing. All right, a little overkill. Fair enough. I understand the buttery B-roll sequence is a, it's just a Peter McKinnon thing that I love trying to do and I'm not that good at it. But listen, I've worked on these shoes. What, what do I call these things? Let me know down in the comments. What should I call these things? They're kind of like shoes for an acoustic panel. I've spent the last nine or so days building, tweaking, adjusting, and perfecting, perfecting these things so that I can actually use this panel or more. I mean, think about it. These things actually come off of the panel and they're not huge. It's not like they're connected into one giant piece that I have to store. They actually sort of sit well together so you can put them away in a closet or somewhere. You know, I guess these things are actually more like dollies because of the casters. Now with the casters that I got, you can actually pop them out. I bought these little felt feet that you can pop in there and those can stay on with the casters. And then if you wanna take the casters out, you can just set them on the felt feet and slide them around the floor. And that way the panel is actually meeting the floor a lot closer. So whether if you want to close that gap with the floor and the panel, you can have that option or you can leave the casters in and it's just a little bit off the ground, which gives some of the reflections room to pass underneath the panel, which could be cool either way. I have to admit, I'm pretty surprised at how durable these things are. I actually tried to be fairly rough with them because the angle braces thing just feels a little like a little bit like a poor design, but it actually holds up. The particle board that's connected to the angle braces goes up one foot on each side of the panel and it actually holds it very well. So I don't know if this helps you or not, by all means, open patent, you know, use what I did, improve, try your own version. I Let, let me know if you do something like that because this was really fun and I do like being able to move these panels around the room and try different, you know, like when I do room miking stuff, sometimes it's cool to incorporate a gobo in with your mic placement, you know, to get those indirect transients. Is that it? Oxymoron? Anyway, this was a ton of fun. It took a long time and I'm really happy that it works because it would have been a big giant waste of time, but cool nonetheless. So hopefully it brought some value to you. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you're ever looking for remote mixing or session drums or anything, make sure you head on over to andrewmastersmusic.com. You can book me for there. I also do some consulting. If you want to jump on Zoom and just kind of go over something that you're working out, you can book me on there. Again, that's andrewmastersmusic.com. Make sure to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. The YouTube algorithm loves very much when you smash that like button. So again, just one more time, please just smash the like button. Hit the subscribe button if you like this kind of stuff, the notification bell. Make sure to follow me over on Instagram and all the other stuff. Leave a comment below if you have any questions about anything. I respond to nearly every single comment. I try my best. Even though this just went up today on Wednesday, 
I want to say thank you guys so much because it's now officially been one year that I'm posting these videos under this channel. So I'm, I'm very thankful we hit 10,000 subscribers and it's crazy. I, I'm, very, I'm very thankful. So I appreciate you guys so much. And live stream on Friday, 8 p.m. Central. I will see you there. Thank you guys again so much for watching. I will see you in the next one. Peace. Shoo! <laughs>